everyone, Brianna Dignard here and welcome to my channel. Today I've got my plant genetics dress on, some DNA earrings in, and we're going to be talking about one of the women scientists I highlighted during the month of March, but in much more detail this time. We're going to be talking about Barbara McClintock and all of her revolutionary discoveries in genetics. <laughs> Barbara McClintock was born in 1902 in Connecticut, and from a very young age, she was known to have loved science. When it was time for her to go to college, she went to Cornell University and earned her bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degrees there in the field of biology, more specifically in genetics, cytology, zoology, and botany. It's a lot of, a lot of different subjects. And when she was in graduate school, she actually started studying the genetics of corn, which is what the entire rest of her career would be based on. So corn is a perfect model for studying genetics because every single individual kernel of corn is a separate fertilization event and a separate chance for genetics to occur. So it would be like each kernel of corn is basically a separate individual child for that parent cob, I guess, versus each cob of corn or each ear of corn being a separate child. So instead of needing like a hundred different people for a study, you could get a hundred different corn kernels on one corn of cob to one cob of corn, goodness, to get the same genetic information. This is really ideal for like Mendelian genetics or Punnett squares, if anybody can like recall those from their middle school brains. Love Punnett squares. Um, but each individual corn kernel you could count and that counts towards a number inside of a Punnett square. So if you had a corn kernel that was like a cross between yellow corn and like a purple corn, you could do the actual like Punnett square on that, count all the corn kernels and get about the same percentage as estimated by genetics of a Punnett square. So really cool. Um, a lot of times like genetics labs will use corn kernels. It's just a really useful model. So anyway, corn, corn is great. Uh, Barbara Clintock studied corn, was studying corn genetics. And one of her first big things she discovered while well, along with another uh, colleague, Harriet Creighton, and she published this, was this idea of genetic recombination and genetic chromosomal crossover during meiosis, which is the cellular division that your sex cells, so egg and sperm cells, undergo. And genetic recombination is when little pieces from each chromosome get transferred and blah, 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 and when they split, two different cells have two different chromosomes basically in it, or different traits on those chromosomes. And your chromosomes contain genes, which are sequences of DNA responsible for traits like hair color or your eye color, or even a lot more complicated traits that well, we'll get into right now. So she figured out genetic recombination was happening. And this is the same thing responsible for like, if you have a sibling and your sibling doesn't look anything like you, um, or maybe you both have blue eyes, but very different hair color. And that's because your parents' genes um, don't necessar didn't necessarily pass down the exact same chromosomes to the both of you because of genetic recombination. So Barbara Clutoff figured that out. And then she also discovered a little bit later on in the 40s, late 40s, discovered that there are these things called jumping genes or transposable elements. And these are little genes, again, little sequences of DNA that code for a particular trait that could jump around on a chromosome. It didn't always have to be located in the same position on a chromosome. And when it jumped around to different locations on the chromosome, it actually changed what was going on in the surrounding genes. So let's say a little uh, jumping gene flew, or jumped over and landed next to the chromosome that coded for the color of the current corn kernel. Moving that little gene over next to the gene about corn kernel color, that's really hard to say, could actually influence the color. It could change it. It could even also maybe change like the texture of the corn kernel, all because a little piece of genetic information moved from one piece of the chromosome to another. We didn't like get a new gene or anything. We just changed the order and something different occurred. Now, Barbara's ideas and her research were very revolutionary at the time, way ahead of her time, and people didn't believe her. They were like, no, we're not even sure that DNA is like the genetic material. So like your stuff, absolutely not. And she kind of got fed up with that. And was like, fine then, if you guys are gonna pay attention to me, um, I'm gonna keep doing research because that's what I love and I'm finding really cool stuff, but I'm gonna stop publishing my data and I'm gonna stop going on lectures and I'm just gonna stop talking to you about it because y'all suck and you're not listening to me. So why am I gonna bother? 
So she kept doing her research and it wasn't until the 60s or the 70s that there had been enough kind of more foundational work done in genetics that people began revisiting what she had been doing and publishing and they went, oh hey, maybe you were right, Barbara. Maybe that is true. And she was like, yeah, 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 I know. That's why I kept doing my research and kept coming up with more cool things. And after that, she really started to receive the recognition um, and awards for all of the revolutionary work she deserves. Probably one of the like, well, what we would take as the most crowning achievement. She was the 1983 Nobel Prize in Medicine if, or Physiology. Um, and she actually became the first woman to be the sole winner of that prize. So she didn't share it with anybody else. Prior to that, women had won it, but they had shared the prize with somebody else. So amazing accomplishments to her because she truly made so many groundbreaking, um, groundbreaking strides, goodness, in the field of cytogenetics, so studying chromosomes as a means of genetic material. And a lot of that stuff is really important and kind of the basis of some things about genetics we learn in school today. So awesome. And she passed away at the age of 92. Oh wait, no, not at the age of 92. She passed away in 1992, which I guess should be at the age of 90, um, after a full life of really amazing groundbreaking research. So that's just a little bit about the life of Barbara McClintock, who was, again, an amazing women scientist in, uh, well, she studied plant genetics, but those plant genetics applied to human genetics as well. Super important stuff. And today, oh gosh, I'm a little all over the place. Today's fun fact that we're going to rate is that corn only comes in an even number of rows. So I didn't know that. If you didn't know that, give it a high rating in the comments below. Uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram. I post every Tuesday and Friday and keep it sciencey.